Hey everybody, Timo here. This episode is part of the Gitcoin Climate Solutions series. Please head on over to gitcoin.basin.global, check out our grant for the round, and then click back to grants and you will see all the awesome climate projects. There are 40 individual projects and 10 bundles. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them. And welcome to the episode. Hi, how's it going? Welcome, Kyle. Thanks Thanks for stopping by. Thanks for having me. Kyle is with Wex Dow, a legal engineering guild, and he's got a bunch of other projects. He worked with Holly Dow, which is creating a multi-sig wallet, on-chain LLCs, legal entity wrappers. And then he's got this really cool impact Dow, like legal workshop that I think some refi projects are going to start using. So with that, Kyle, why don't you just give people a rundown of like, all those different things and how you ended up here. Yeah, definitely. And I'll also mention a little bit about our OSS work because that's what the grant is for. Specifically. Cool. But yeah, so LexDAO, we're the International Legal Engineers Guild. And so legal engineers are people oftentimes practicing lawyers, but definitely know their way around code. Many of us are very high level Solidity developers, not myself, but Ross is one of our more accomplished engineers and he's worked on like the all the Moloch frameworks actually. And that's a really important low level architecture for DAOs. So if you're interested in using a DAO, Moloch is, yeah, it's, um, it's good to know about that. If you like to look under the hood, otherwise DAO house is one of the platforms you can spin up a DAO and then Cali, which is what Ross has directly contributed to Cali. So that's Alex DAO our partner developed out of Alex DAO. And also developed out of Alex DAO, that's in the climb around, by the way, just quick is Tater DAO. And I, and I believe you're chatting with them in a, in a, yeah, a top of the hour or something like that, but yeah. And Alexdao, we uh, also do services. It's not just the straight up code for this grant round. It is, that's what you will be donating to the aspect of Alexdao that does just straight up do, do the code. But we also, so for instance, every Monday I hold a office hours in Alexdao at Discord and go to our Discord, Alexdao, X-D-A-O dot chat. And so, yeah, so every Monday, I believe it's 1030 Pacific time office hours. And so you can join the chat and ask whatever you want about public legal education in this space. And I'm a strong believer in public legal education generally, but especially in the DAO space where even the professionals, the lawyers working on this day in and day out, don't really know the answers because it's such a young space innovating in, in law tech. It's all the more important that we have public legal education and that the public visits, a lot of people noting up, but every six months or so, you be asked the same questions you did before. For instance, are, is everyone still advising to spin up a UNA as kind of initial exploratory stage? Right now, we are still a good kind of thing to look at as a UNA as, as a way to as opposed to just not any legal entity. But yeah, that's an example of where Xtao overall is quite a bit of synergies within the different kind of guilds that we have. So real world assets is one guild and that's really quite related to climate. So yeah, people have to own land and have leased the land often to be able to revive the land and then be a good steward of it. That's it. Tater Dow will probably speak more to that guild within Lexdow. The Una thing, Dapper, that that's where Kelly that guild and then Clinic, which is what I founded in Lexdow, we have synergies so Kelly has a product that's an NFT, it's a wrapper that is an operating agreement. And so people can choose an LLC or they can choose Una and there are some offshores that will be there fairly soon. There's sometimes a bit of a, for Una it's great because you kind of can choose the Una and you pretty much still need EIN. You can self-serve an EIN, but the clinic offers that. So the clinic offers kind of last mile for whatever you can't do with a nice NFT wrapper or something like that. And yeah, I'm getting a little bit in the weeds here, but NFT wrappers are pretty cool because you can put that in any DAO you actually have. So if you choose Aragon or you choose Colony, you, you can take that NFT and just put it in the DAO. If Nose is safe. So it gives a lot more um, flexibility. You don't necessarily have to use LexDAO is building out its DAO system. Though we believe in our the governance generally, right? So like one thing we have in Kelly is that tokens are non-transferable, but then people can vote to make them transferable. You can also start out with it being transferable. But that's a way for people to deal with securities law is when they're ready to, to take on that burden of verbal, then they can make that switch. But in, at the very early stage, they can do non-transferable. And then I personally have never seen a situation where a non-transferable could be considered a security. So yeah, so when you donate to this round, it's one way to think about it is we lower the transaction costs for legal, just generally. We're automating the law services we provide. The clinic I just mentioned, that's a student plus supervisor model. So law students do most of the work and they get great education. They're w much cheaper than lawyers and then lawyers just make sure the quality assurance and such. So it's high quality still. And uh, in the clinic, we prioritize legal aid for impact DAOs. So definitely DAOs are focused on uh, doing good things for the, the climate. We give top priority to, and yeah, we already have really low costs, but as we grow, we'll also continue to subsidize those. 
and continue to automate them. So we're also doing stuff with AI and so if you donate to the OSS, that could ultimately end up in some AI. And those AI things we're doing tend to be chatbots. So you can get your public school education kind of by yourself, just kind of thing with the bot. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Kyle, I love all the, the alphabet soup, right? Of like all the different DAOs, like Lex and Tater and Co- Code Slaw and all the different little slang words we have. And I, I saw Lex DAO's poll the other day of like, should we on our Twitter profile or you know, Twitter stream be more like you know, professional? I, the way I understood it was more like legal lawyery, or should we be more like, they didn't say shit posting, but like more just like raggedy ass using all these different slang words and whatnot. I, I definitely voted ladder. I love the style of it. Thank so. you. Cool. I'm trying to find the link here. And looks like, so the, the correct link is with the code slaw hat on the profile picture. Is that right, Kyle? For this, uh, I'm going to just post it here in the chat. Let me have a look here. I just want to make sure we, everyone's looking at the right uh, project. It is the right one. Yeah. Okay. And the, we have received uh, donations already. So I think that's the deal. All these grants is they don't, they're not showing right now with the funding received, but we are doing well this round. So just, you know, yeah. Okay, cool. Uh, and so just for example, when Kyle was talking about like the Kali DAO and the software that they've built, later today, we'll be speaking with James and Nick from Cater DAO and Cougar DAO and Real World, World Asset Consortium. In Cougar DAO, we used Kali Safe uh, to deploy the contract for the Coog token. And the Coog token is just LLC shares basically, but it's, it's on chain. So it's, that's like the real world use case of what Kyle was just explaining. Thank you. Yeah. That's great that you're an actual pilot of this stuff and that's open source software. So if you decide to donate to our grant, those funds will go towards these types of real world products. I also have escrow agreement that I, I believe at least Raid Guild relies on and we'll see what the future brings. The other cool stuff we'll build. We're also opening it up the grants to uh, other groups that are doing Code's Law. So it's not just Lexdown members, this money is going to go towards as we're just generally building out our grant system, just like many of the other house in this ecosystem grants, it'll probably be on discourse where people can even see who's submitting what and just open dialogue more and more public. And really what matters is not group is part of LexDAO or not. What matters is that they're, what they're going to do with that working capital, like really important cold law. And so LexDAO is a community. We have that expertise to really go, yeah, okay, this is important. Just like the one up with the cougar, bring out that kind of apparatus. Yeah. So one of my, again, one of my favorite things about Lex Dow and, and uh, is that all you guys, right, or they went to law school for the most part, or are attorneys or were attorneys, or but you're also programmers, you're also marketers. I feel like this, these different DAOs that are like spin, coming out of Lex Dow are like pushing the edge of what, like business law and contract law and securities law and real estate law. It's just really cool to see, Kyle. Thank you. Yeah. And um, my background is entertainment law. So that's, we're also doing that quite a bit. And when at a certain point, hopefully it's really important that entertainers, they support climate action and such, right? So there's a possibility that there'll be an intersection uh, for climate entertainment, but for now where we're pushing the limits, uh, we haven't kind of go back to the climate with Lextel's entertainments. That's all copyright and patent even a little bit. Yeah, I mean, um, built, hopping on to LexDAO Discord and being able to just ask a question. And the biggest thing is, right, is LexDAO or, or Ross or James or Nick, it, we're not your attorney, but like, you can go on there and ask a question and you'll have five or six people, right? Your attorneys or practicing, not practicing, whatever, giving you their input. It's just, it's amazing. It's an amazing resource, really. Thank you. Yeah. And especially questions that are difficult for a general attorney to answer, questions about uh, more DAO type of issues, how, how do DAOs engage with the law? That's where we're very helpful. It's, diff- it's a difficult to really get education for that type of niche law. And that tends to be what our ecosystem are mo- most pressing questions. So beyond like the normal law stuff and code stuff, like let's say business and finance and copyright and patent law, you run these clinics, which I, and I think your focus is more on impact, right? Is that, in, can you just give us some background on that? Yeah. So the clinic is, it's got two main goals. One is educating law students. And then the other one is giving impact DAOs a leg up with legal aid. Impact DAOs, oftentimes impact DAOs are taking on that burden of making sure they don't have negative externalities and trying their best to do positive externalities. That tends to mean that in the market, there's a bit of a handicap or a competitor that is polluting and 
really putting the costs on the society writ large, right? So this is a way to kind of counterbalance that. Also, just generally, legal costs are really high. So even if we're not thinking in this competitive, there are the polluters and the non-polluters, whatever it is, even if it's still, are people doing pro-social activities? We have limited resources, right? So we can't offer them to everyone. And so we prioritize the ones that are doing that really amazing stuff in Web3 uh, that we believe in, right? To make the world a better place. And then we them as best we can to keep their legal costs down since legal costs are so high. And so really that's just the, ultimately the value add. As we go, we automate. For instance, we're getting more into AI so the AI can take these case studies we're doing with various DAOs that we're helping. So we also work in public in the clinic, which is a radical concept for law, but for Web3, it's part of the ethos. And, and so we're finding there cool. many clients are actually really into that. And so, yeah, so eventually, even though we're initially prioritizing the DAOs that are um, doing some really important things, ultimately we'll have a lot of self-help resources that really anyone can take advantage of. Yeah. I love that. Like the, the building in public, the you know, learning in public, that's one of the reasons I'm doing this, this like based in live format. It's, you know, streaming over on LinkedIn and it's streaming over on, on YouTube. And we're going to do some stuff next week where it might actually be able to go to LinkedIn profiles and multiple YouTube channels all at once, but to like open up, right? Like Pranav and I were just speaking about like the, what's happened in the last year, crypto, right? And blockchain and web three is like all three of those words have become bad words. Yeah. You know, like scammy casino type stuff. But it's like, if you go through these Gitcoin grants, the three different rounds, whether it be the open source round or the, the infra round or the climate round, all three of those different rounds with all the different projects are, are creating real world impact and tools for human coordination, ecosystem services, law, impact, policy, finance. It's, these are real world use cases, like it, media, storytelling. Like it, it's, that's what I tell people. It's like, it's not just like pegs, right? Like images of monkeys and whatever. There's like, there's real stuff being built over here. So that's the purpose of what we're doing with the Basin Live is to, to let people know that. That's fantastic. Yeah. I'm just unfortunate chilling effect for bad actors in our space. And Earlier years, it was always problematic, but now that we're so close to the early majority and this life cycle of us technology, it's going to stay with the pop culture sensibilities about us, right? Like before crypto was kind of out there like a previous cycle, right? But this cycle, people point to, hey, look, Larry David. So it's even, yeah. Yeah, that, that ad, I mean, that ad is like, I was, they were just setting themselves up. You're referring to the FTX ad, right? Exactly. From David. Yeah. So it's different, right? Like less bear market. And there were a lot of bad, bad actors that kind of were exposed, right? Because the bear market. It was, it definitely had a chilling effect, pe people thinking that crypto is about a scam. But then this recent bull, it was went, oh, okay, well, it was just Luddites or whatever, right? But now, because there was so much publicity, this most recent, because uh, crypto got to that point where it actually was in majority cultures, advertisements, Super Bowl, all that, right? That when the bad actors, again, once again, now it's also something that everyone is looking at. Oh, well, I'm, the main thing I'm saying is this next round, when this next bowl we have, really should be led by regens and people that are showing how much this is. Uh, this technology is going to change humanity for the better, by far. Obviously, I have to build it out this way, so it's important we have this feedback loop of, of this culture that takes the lead, and then this culture grows as well, and so more and more people buy into the culture. And that's one of the great things about Gitcoin is that, that the, these grant rounds is a way to sustain the, this culture and, and build it out. But yeah, I definitely see LexDAO. One of the main goals of LexDAO is that we help with compliance. So governments see that there's, that, that they're not combative. And another whole aspect of LexDAO is uh, we do crypto advocacy. So we, we kind of think tank stuff about bills and give our comments to bills. And, and this next stage in our evolution, we then have a whole coalition of DAOs that see what LexDAO has done. They put their name on it, and then we're working with we to actually go to the Hill and uh, give the senators that, that basic information and all that. Yeah, so because uh, if we get the regulation right, basically that we can self-regulate as much as possible, and then we do a, a good job self-regulating, at least like that, we believe that'll be much better for one in the long run. I dropped that uh, in the chat there. This Brad Fell, the prominent VC here in Colorado and nationally, posted this last week. And I'll just read it real quick. He, he says, I regularly hear to be patient. It's like the internet was in 1999 ahead of its time. The builders are building and it'll take over everything in the future. It, it goes on to say, just beware of the Ponzi schemes. But he, he, I think the post, and I'll post it here is the title of the post was, I don't hate crypto. And it's like that bad image that crypto has and people who are against it. But smart people are now starting to see that like, there's real infra, right? And real tools 
in real efficiencies. Like for example, what uh, Lex Dow is, is in Kali Dow is building. You can on Kali, you can do an option for a two click, right? Or a seven click mm -hmm. entity formation for your unincorporated nonprofit association, your LLC. As Kyle mentioned, there's going to be some offshore entities, but it's uh, talk about efficiencies in lowering the cost. And these are real like entities, right? In Delaware or Wyoming, or maybe Switzerland for the off or, or Cayman, have you decided yet? Uh, the first one's going to be Marshall Island, actually. Oh, Marshall Island. Okay, cool. Cool. How can people support you? He obviously, head over to the, the grant round here. I'll post that link again in the chat. People can donate to that round. They can donate to the climate round. There's a lot of cool projects to look at and check out. But, but what do you, what does Lex Dow need or what does your clinic mo need most or Kali need most right now? If you're a lawyer or a legal engineer, a lawyer that is interested in crypto lawyer, right, in, in this space, and especially if you're a law student, do reach out to us that, and uh, generally really, but uh, law students, that's uh, they're great working opportunities in the clinic. You can get to know some of the larger DAOs in this space, or even some of the startup DAOs. We've got a, a, an interesting range of DAOs that engage with us. And I guess they're called cows, like the corporate <laughs> autonomous organization and all that. So we kind of have a, a range. It's not necessarily full on decentralized, the working opp opportunities in the clinic. And then, yeah, so for the crypto lawyers, it's more if you want to be a supervisor for the law students. And then as far as clients go, we do our kind of, we do have that, we have more demand than the speed at which we're kind of growing out the clinic. We're always happy to chat with people and get to know people and make exceptions where we can and such. And then in LexDAO itself, we love chatting with people that have legal questions. So please hang out. We have a membership LexDAO does, and it, the membership definitely has lots of values for crypto lawyers and students and such, but anyone can be a member. And we have a few people that are lawyers and members. They just really love this kind of stuff. And they join and membership is 300 a year. It's not too much. And though there's also work for membership. So especially if you're interested in working in the clinic or somewhere else like that, you can just do $300 worth of work. And that's really great for oftentimes that I experience for person does the work as well as Lex Dow, the person feels kind of has a sweat equity relationship, but not actual equity, but uh, bond. There we go. <laughs> that's a better term with Lex Dow, And we get to know them as well through that process. So yeah, so work for membership is, is great. And then we're building out like, a business membership, that type of thing. So with the business membership, we haven't totally figured it out yet. So I, I can't really say what it is, but it'll be things like we'll spend office hours in your DAO, a certain number of office hours. And yeah, so look for that announcement, DAO to DAO kind of relationships. Cool. What the, the fact that, you know, going back to efficiencies that like so much of law, right? My, my real estate experience, I mean, it's what my career has been. Is I'm like, yeah, $5,000 on a, a settlement statement or the bigger deals, I've seen 50 to $75,000 legal fee bills. And you're like, do like what you got, it was a form contract. Like you, you just reviewed some title work and there are real efficiencies that, that I think Lex now is working on and streamlining in form contracts. And that, you know, the example of the two click or seven click entity formation is just number one. And I think like purchase agreements and all the sales and like royalty agreements, I think all that stuff could eventually go on chain. And, and then the ownership transfer, like James and over talking over in Cougar Dow about like we could sell the NFT that is the LC, which is actually the ownership property, ownership interest of the property. And we could just they basically transfer the ownership that way. It's, I mean, it's mind blowing about like what this could enable for business and finance and for our work climate and regeneration, restoration, whatnot. Completely. Yeah. And oftentimes the roadblocks are legal roadblocks. Me coming from the music industry that kind of participated that is starting out something like Spotify. The problem isn't the tech. The problem is getting the licenses from everyone. So where Spotify really succeeded was that they bought those licenses. And so they were able to provide enough of the overall catalog of popular music and right that they're, that they became the shelling point of streaming, <laughs> but it wasn't really tech. And it's it often the times with blockchain, that's a, one of the roadblocks. And, and so LexDAO, we work a lot to make sure that roadblock, just another area of, and you could think of it as another area of technology, right? To build out law tech, as well as up developer tech. And so for things like a full solution, like Spotify, but you know, Web3 values and such, right? So for community and that, but yeah, oftentimes it really is actually signing licenses with the right parties and with real world assets, that's making sure that you have the right to do what you need to do on, on the land, right? Yeah. Yeah. And I'm sure you've probably seen uh, charged particles and zero X splits. Mm -hmm. Have you seen both those projects? Oh yeah. 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 So I mean, Basin, we're using both those for yeah, treasuries, right? Inside the NFTs with tokens and other NFTs, yield bearing assets, but then also zero X splits for splitting payment streams. And 
both of those, I think from what I can tell, and there's some, a lot of other projects like in the music and entertainment industry, that, that those tools w were built or are being built for those, solve those real world pain points around the entertainment and, and music industry, film also. Yeah. Yeah. From, from my vantage, me being, it's, it's my space. So I like to think it has a value and everywhere, right? <laughs> but for my perspective, what we're doing is no matter what, we've kind of made all of this, we're making all this stuff intellectual property. If you have an NFT that you can trade ownership of, a certificate of authenticity, that in a sense you've, that you've taken something that is real property and you've abstracted it into kind of intellectual property, right? We can think of money, all that as intellectual property. Again, this is my background, so I'm kind of like making a big tent. Mm -hmm. Way more things than we currently do as uh, intellectual properties. Why that matters is that if a licensing, if copyright can figure out the licensing, and that tends to be the most difficult kind of licensing period, especially music. There's, it's so really the agreements between major labels or you can't have it. It's, it's, it's yeah, it's, uh, NAFTA is equally complex as one of, just one of these agreements, right? And so if that, those hard, to me, that's the hardest problem. And then that can be much e really easily copy pasted to real actual, much easier situation and for land, real estate, that kind of thing on the technological side. There's still direction of this is a registry like in the county actually is it going to dissipate? So then we're getting into the interpersonal relationships that it oftentimes is the thing that actually holds back this tech, which is why yeah it's so important for to have that legal background. We see it all the time with securities, right? Where of course the tech can do it, but then suddenly the token is nefariously even right, just straight up. Right? And one way to think about the tech, I guess, is I like to think about it is and it might be a little weird, but hammers they're, they're war hammers and they're carpenters hammers. And so we want to build as many carpenter hammers as we can here. Cool. Yeah. Yeah. U useful tools to do something in, in the real world. Kyle, thanks for taking time out of your day to, to come by. Like I said, this is, was streamed over at YouTube and LinkedIn. Uh, so it'll be available over there. We're going to edit it down on, on Spotify and podcasts and tunes, whatnot. But yeah, thanks for coming. And for those listening, watching, whatnot, please go over, check out WexDAO, check out Gitcoin. So yeah. Appreciate you coming. Thanks. And if you want to go to see our grants, the easy thing to remember, it's lexdowgrant.us. So L-E-X-D-A-O-G-R-A-N-T dot U-S. And that one, you'll see that this new alpha round grant also giveth. And yeah, just easy more, easier to remember than this really long thing. But Cool, cool. Well, yeah, it. so for those watching, listening, we're, I'm going to take a short break. I'm going to be back at, it's 12.30 my time. I'm on mountain time. So at, or excuse me, it's 12, it's noon mountain time. At 12.30, I'll be back with uh, TaterDAO, CougarDAO, and Real World Asset Consortium for 30 minutes. And then we'll be speaking with Will Masters from Demeter and Ogallala Life. And then to end up the Basin Live session today, we'll have Joe Brewer from Earth Regenerators in Barachara in Colombia, regenerating 500,000 hectares. You see an entire watershed in Colombia. We have some really cool guests and projects coming up. And just a reminder, this is made possible by the Climate Collective and brought to you by Basin.Global. So thanks for tuning in, Kyle and Pranav. Appreciate you coming and sharing your wisdom and knowledge and everything you're working on. So we'll see you in a little bit. Thanks. Okay. Thanks. Make sure to add it to your final ballot. Please make a donation to every single one. It doesn't matter how big or how small it is. It's more about the number of votes and the number of donations that counts because that's what engages quadratic funding. This Gitcoin Climate Round is funding $333,000 of matching funds to all these awesome climate projects. So please support them.